Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be exploring an example where we identify zero force members in a truss system. So let's go ahead and get started. In the directions here, we're being asked to use the visual inspection criteria to identify the zero force members in each truss. And here we have two trusses that were given. Now, if uh, you don't recall what the visual inspection criteria are, maybe check out my previous video where I summarized each of those visual inspection criteria. I'm gonna assume that's fresh on your mind as I go through uh, these uh, identifying the zero force members of each of these trusses. So the first thing you wanna do, and, and again, we're starting with uh, truss A first, but the first thing you wanna do is when you're applying these visual um, inspection criteria, you want to look at each joint. Now, I know that seems kind of weird because you're trying to identify zero force members, but you really want to do it by inspecting what's going on at each joint, okay? So let's go through this one at a time and look at these joints and then use the joint inspection to find the zero force members. So let's look at joint A, all right? So at joint A, the first thing you wanna notice is you have an external support reaction there, okay? So both of the um, inspection criteria involve identifying where um, external reactions are or are not, okay? So anytime you have a joint that has an external support reaction, um, the visual inspection criteria for identifying zero force members will not be applicable there. So that knocks out joints A and E. If you notice, you have external reactions at A and E. You got a pin and a roller here. So we, we're not gonna um, be able to apply either of the visual inspection criteria to uh, A and E. So let's keep moving. Let's look at joint B, okay? At joint B, we notice we have three members coming into B, okay? But we have an applied load at point B. So both of the visual inspection criteria from our previous video uh, involve making sure we do not have applied loads at a joint when we're trying to identify zero force members. So because we have this applied load, which I called P1 at point B, um, we can't apply either of those criteria when investigating the members coming in to joint B. And then for the same reason, among other reasons, uh, C and D are also going to be out, okay? In addition, C is also out of the uh, criteria uh, for inspections because it has one, two, three, four, five members coming in at C. And if you recall, each of the visual inspection criteria involve either identifying a joint with two members or three members coming in, okay? So basically, all all of these members along the bottom are out, all right? Now let's move up to the top cord here. Let's look at joint F, okay? So joint F does not have any applied loads. Next, joint F does not have any external support reactions. Now what's happening at joint F? Well, you have two members coming in to joint F, and these two members are non-collinear. That means they do not lie along the same line. So by visual inspection criteria number two, we have two non-collinear members forming a truss joint, and there is no applied load and no external support reaction at that joint, so both of these members are zero force members. Okay, now I'm going to cycle back to this and summarize it here in a second. But for now, we're going to say both of these members are zero force members by visual inspection criteria number two that was mentioned in the previous video. Now, for the same reason, I'm going to hop over here and take a look at joint J. Again, joint J is formed by two non-collinear members. There are no applied loads at J and there is no external support reaction at J. So also by visual inspection criteria number two, both of these members, member IJ and member AJ, are both zero force members. So I put a little zero there to indicate that. All right, now let's keep rolling. Let's look at the last three joints that are still hanging out here, okay? So if you look at G, um, and, and the same is going to apply to joint I, but if we look at G or I, there are no applied loads, 
There's also no external support reactions, so that's all good. But if you notice, you have multiple members, oops, you have multiple members coming in to G as well as I. And if you remember your visual inspection criteria, uh, discuss having either two non-collinear members forming a joint, that was criteria number two, or three members forming a joint in which two are collinear, okay? So I and G, neither of these fit into either of those criteria, all right? So those are out. What about H here? Well, H does not have any applied loads. It does not have any external reactions. H is formed by two collinear members. GH and HI are collinear because they lie along the same line. It is also formed by this third member, CH, okay? Now, what visual inspection criteria number one says is when you have a truss joint formed by two collinear members and you do not have an applied load or an external reaction at that joint, the third member will be a zero force member, all right? Now, at this point, we've looked at all um, of our joints, and so our summary can be the following. We can say F E H, uh, sorry, F E F equals F F G equals F I J equals F A J all equals zero. Okay, so oops. All of these equal zero. These are these four members, okay? And we're going to say by criterion number two from the previous video, okay? What about FCH? Well, FCH also equals zero, but this one was by criterion number one from our previous video. So that summarizes truss number, truss A here. All right, so let's scroll down and do the same thing for truss B. Now I'm gonna go a little faster here since this is our second um, example. So we have this truss here. We're gonna do the same thing that we did uh, before. We're gonna go from one joint to the next and see if any of the joints fit into those visual inspection criteria. So let's look at joint A first. Joint A and B for that matter, both have external reactions. So that disqualifies joints A and B from uh, fitting into either of those inspection criteria, okay? Let's go to joint C. Joint C has an applied load, P, okay? Additionally, joint C has several members coming into it. So joint C is disqualified from the inspection criteria for a couple of reasons, okay? What about joint D? Well, joint D does not have an applied load. It also does not have an external reaction there and it is formed by two non-collinear members. Thus, by visual inspection criteria number two, both of the members forming joint D are zero force members, all right? Now let's keep moving down. Um, now here's what's interesting about this. When you have concluded that these two are zero force members, it's like they're not there anymore, okay? It's kind of like they're not there. So I can think of these as gone now, all right? I can think of it as gone, all right? Even though I'm gonna keep it there, but I can pretend like these two members are gone. Now that these two members are thought of as not here, what do I have left over to deal with? Well, I finally have left over to deal with joint E, which now is being formed by what? Two non-collinear members for which E does not have an applied load nor an external support reaction. That means that both of these members, CE and AE, are also zero force members. So just to have the original um, truss shown there, I can, I can come down here and I can say these two are zero force members. Now, another way you could have thought of this is if you made your way to E first, if you made your way to uh, E first somehow, then you could have said uh, by criterion um, number one, CE was a zero force member looking at joint E. And then you can think of that as going away. And then finally, you can think of this long member 
um, A, E, D, along with C, D, also being zero force members. So you end up coming to the same conclusion, all right? So ultimately, uh, as we said before, all of these are zero force members. So I'm going to say F, C, D equals F, D, E equals zero by criterion two. And then I'm going to say then, then, F C E equals F A E equals zero also by criterion two. So that's a succession, a successive recognition of zero force members. So um, this is pretty much the end of this video. Again, the moral of this story is whenever you are identifying zero force members of trusses, you have these two visual inspection criteria that you need to um, apply and use to investigate. Now, when you do that, you need to look at uh, your trust joint by joint. You need to look at each joint and see if the joint meets the visual inspection criteria. And then you use that to determine if members are zero force members. So that concludes this video. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe and be on the lookout for more content like this. Thanks for watching.